show you how I put together a couple of bosun pipe lanyards and in the process how you also use some of the decorative knots that you see on the lanyard and how they're applied. There seems to be a little bit of mystery surrounding how these things are put together, but I hope this tape will clear things up. So, let's get started. This is Samson brand number 72 braided nylon. It's a very good quality nylon cord. It's got a very good feel to it. It's soft and it's got a very good braid. It doesn't have any hairs sticking out that would uh, make it start looking fuzzy after you use it for a while. It's a very good quality material to use and I recommend this one. If you have trouble finding this anywhere, let me know and if you need help, I can help you obtain it. But it is probably the best stuff I've found to work with for making braided bosun pipe lanyards. This is something you'll need here to help fasten the knots to the lanyard. It's, it won't be used on a knot application on the lanyard for decorative knots, but it is very good quality line. This is what they call bonded nylon. It's got some kind of protective coating on it that helps the knots grip very good. Once you use it, you'll see what I mean. Also, I've had this roll for probably 18 years. So if you buy one roll, it'll probably last your entire lifetime. So, here's how much line do I need? This particular braid I'm going to use is going to have seven parts to it. So I'm going to need seven pieces of line the same length. The way I measure it is you start, throw it behind your neck, most of the time you want it to come down to about right here. If you're going to be wearing it with a navy uniform, you don't want it up above the point in the V on the collar. Normally right about here. Right about where your rib cage meets. Right in there. And then you double this length right here. And then I add a little bit more just for insurance to make sure I put enough in there. It's usually twice as much plus a little bit more for insurance. Now you take all seven strands and I like to use a constrictor knot to fasten them together. I'll show you the constrictor knot in between projects here. It's a very good knot to use. It holds very secure. And once I tighten this up, you can't untie it. You pretty much have to cut it because it's very, very tight. It tightens down upon itself. And it's got a pretty good name as far as calling it the constrictor. And I usually put an overhand knot on top of that to lock it in place. Using on this one for the neck piece is going to be what I call over three. It's got seven pieces. You're going to go over three here, over three here over three here, over three here, over three here, over three here, all the way to the end of the neck piece. Very simple, just over three, over three. Take the one on the outside, go over three, take the one on the other side, go over three, the one on the other side, over three, this one over three. Of course, you'll do this a little bit tighter when you've got it tied up to a post and you've got some tension on it. And I'll show you how that works. What you do is find yourself a comfortable place to work from. It could be a nail in your garage, a doorknob, tied to the kitchen table leg, anything that's a comfortable height for you to work from. It's easier for me to work standing up. You can sit down and do it if you want to, but it's easier for me to work standing up. 
and you just start your braiding process. Over three, over three, over three, over three, and on down the line till you get to the end. I'll stop for now and show you a finished product and how it looks at the end. Also, while you're working, make sure you've got a clean working surface where your rope's laying on the deck or the floor. Uh, you don't want to get your cord dirty and you don't want to have any sawdust, wood chips, things like that getting caught in the braid on the cord. Also, every once in a while, you need while you're doing the braid, you'll notice at the bottom, it'll start kind of a reverse braid from the way you're doing it at the top. Every once in a while, just take a strand, pull it out, and that loosens up the tangle at the bottom. About every third pass on your braid, just kind of reach down and pull one of the strands out. It's usually the strand you're going to be working with next. See, that's the easiest way for me to do it. But whatever way suits you best. Make sure your working surface is clean. That's one of the main things. Okay, here we have a finished braid. Let's try and get a little bit closer so we can see what it looks like here. That's the finished braid. Looks kind of rough like right now, but after you work with this thing for a while, it'll smooth out over time. 